Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk to you about a very powerful and useful feature that I'm sure you will utilize a lot in your app called variables. And variables are a way to store information so that that information or data can be manipulated. So oftentimes in our database, in our database tables, we have all this content, all this data that might not be in the exact format that we want it presented in our front end. So during that API call, when your API goes and pulls that data and then is processing it, this is when we can use variables to actually manipulate that data to present it to our front end in a format that we see fit. So maybe a variable holds a conversion. Uh, maybe it is going to capitalize a title or maybe it's going to make phone numbers uniform because everyone enters them in a different way. There's all these different use cases for variables and I'm going to show you a few just within uh, this deals app example. So first I want to show you uh, my database tables. Remember I have the deals, the user, and merchants. And I actually went into my deals table and added this promo code. So maybe when you show up to uh, your merchant you actually need to show this promo code display on on the app to get the deal. So how would you do that? Well, I'm going to go into my API page and I actually created uh, a new group ca here called demo because I don't want to mess with my CRUD API endpoints. And there's actually a video where I show you how to uh, make these custom endpoints if you haven't seen that. But I'm going to go into this get deals by ID. And when this opens up, here's that anatomy of the API endpoint. And I'm just going to go into my response in this variable deals, I'm going to use a dot here, and then I'm going to say promo code. So all this is doing is saying in this variable deals, which is my deals database table, uh, respond with the promo code, and that's it. So I'm going to hit save, and I'll show you how that works when I run and debug this, and I'll type in that first record. And here is that promo code, just ABC123. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that uh, dot notation as a way we can uh, sort of manipulate our variables and get exactly what information we need. And also dot notation is going to be very useful and serve you uh, not just with variables but in other features and tools within Xano. Okay, so next let's say that I want to display the name of my merchant in all capital letters because maybe that's just uh, more aesthetically pleasing and pops out on my front end. So if I go to my get merchant by ID right here, and this anatomy opens up that we've all seen before, and I can go into my function stack and hit this blue plus button and go into data manipulation and click on update variable. And this window will open up where it asks me what the existing variable is, and I will say uh, merchants, and I'm actually going to do merchant dot name, remember that dot notation, and I'm going to update it by itself, so merchants, and then dot name, and then I'm going to add a filter right here. And I'm going to go to choose filter, and I have all these different options, and I actually want um, text, which is over here, and I'm going to scroll down, and there's this two upper option. But just look at all these different options we have um, to give us so much flexibility, but I'm going to use two upper, because I want that uh, merchant name in all caps. I'm going to hit update. Then I'm going to hit save. And now when I come and run and debug this, I'll just type in that first merchant record, Firestone. And there it is. The name is in all cap letters. So maybe that's more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so next I want to show you just a simple little conversion uh, which we can use variables for. So say that in my deals app, that good, great, and super deal at 10, 25, and 50. Maybe that's not percent off. Maybe that's actually dollars off. Maybe this is more of a gift card app. And let's say that I want to open up my app to my friends in Europe and they don't want to see uh, that displayed in dollars. They want to see it displayed in euros because that's the currency they're on. Well, I can use variables for this. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into this uh, get deals by ID. And now that this opens up, I just want to change my response right here. I'm going to want the entire record, let's say, for this. And I'll hit save, and now I'll go into my function stack, into data manipulation, and I'll scroll down to update variable. And the existing variable, I'll say deals, but then I'll do uh, dot amount, and then the value I'm going to update it by will be itself. So deals variable, 
and dot amount. And remember that's just saying in this deals variable, which is our deals database table, go and get the amount. And now I'm going to add a filter. So another filter option here is math. Remember we have all these different types um, up top here to give you a lot of flexibility. Uh, definitely recommend going into the documentation and checking it out. So I'm going to do math multiply because it's going to be a conversion from dollars to euros and I believe the conversion rate right now is about 0.85. So I'm going to go ahead and hit update and then save. And now when I pull um, that, first, that first deal at 10 and hit update, we can see the new amount is displayed at 8.5. So that's a pretty cool use case right there. Okay, next I want to show you how you might just pull a list. So let's say for this deals app, maybe I just want to display uh, a list of all the amounts of dollars off I have. So I'll go into this get deals and this will be query all. And I'm going to go into my function stack and I'm going to go data manipulation. And instead of update variable, I'm going to create a variable. And I'm just going to name this variable one or var one. And then the value will be this deals variable because that's associated with my deals table. And I'll do this dot notation and I'll type in the amount and I'll hit save. And now I'll go into my response and I'll make sure that this variable is just going to be var one. So this is similar to when we displayed that promo code, but sort of just another way to do it. And when I go ahead and run and debug this, we'll see that I have those amounts just listed out here, $10 off, $20 off, and $50 off. Okay, and just one more thing I wanna show you. Let's say I wanna add up these amounts because, hey, maybe I can stack these sort of gift cards up on top of each other and, and use it all at once. Wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm just going to close out of this and stay in this get deals and I'm going to go into my function stack, go into data manipulation, update variable, and this window opens up and the existing variable will just be uh, var1 and the value that I'm updating it by is also going to be var1 and then I'm going to add a filter, I'm going to choose a filter and go to math and then I will go to sum and this will add everything up together and I will hit update and save and now when I go and run and debug this we'll see that hey I have 80 total dollars uh, in say gift cards or redeemable dollars to use in my merchant so as you can see there's a whole lot of flexibility and things you can do with variables uh, because oftentimes our data isn't exactly how we want it or maybe we want uh, to process it in a different way uh, during our API call. So that's what variables are used for. Uh, I encourage you to play around with it. Also look into our documentation and uh, have fun.